Here I've got this nice problem involving the fractional part function that's from a Romanian math contest from 2004. And what's interesting about this is we show that one equation has infinitely many solutions while a very related equation has zero solutions. And in fact, the first equation is to show that there are infinitely many positive rational numbers x such that the fractional part of x squared plus the fractional part of x is 0 0.99. Whereas the second one is to show that there are no positive rational solutions to fractional part x squared plus fractional part x equals one. Okay, so let's maybe look at our um, solution to this first part. And that will start with the following simple observation that 0 0.99 is the same thing as 9 over 10 plus 90 or 9 over 100. And then furthermore, this 9 over 100 is something squared. And we want to realize it as something squared because we've got this x squared term over here. So in particular, that 99 over 100 is 3 over 10 quantity squared. Furthermore, this 9 over 10 can be written as a couple of copies of this 3 over 10 added together. So notice that it's 3 over 10 plus 3 over 10 plus 3 over 10. So somehow along our work for this problem, we should be probably squaring 3 over 10 and then we should be adding 3 over 10 somehow to itself three times. Okay, so working towards that, we have this hint built into our problem. And again, that hint is this 3 over 10 squared being the same thing as 9 over 100. And that is that something like x equals p of n plus 3 over 10 probably works. So I'll just say this probably works. And this p of n is a simple function that takes a natural number and gives a natural number. So in other words, it's going to be something that goes from n to n. And why do I say that it's probably a simple function? Well, that's because it's on a math contest. And most math contests have tricky solutions, but not really complicated solutions. So we can probably find a simple p of n. And so towards that, let's try maybe the simplest P of N that allows for infinitely many solutions to this. And that would be a linear function. So we would say P of N equals A times N plus B. So notice that it couldn't be a constant function because then we'd only have one solution. So this was like kind of the next best thing, which would be a linear function. If this doesn't work, we'd maybe push it higher, but I think this will work. Okay, so now that means we have x equals a n plus b plus 3 by 10. So that's kind of our test shape for this number x. Okay, now let's calculate x squared. And multiplying that out, we'll get a squared n squared plus b squared plus 9 over 100. So that comes from just squaring all of the terms. And then we get a couple of cross terms. So we'll have 2abn from the cross term from a n times b. You can multiply this out if you need to. And then plus, let's, let's see, it'll be 6an over 10 plus... 6b over 10. Okay, so that's what we get for x squared. Now, let's see what happens when we take the floor. So, first of all, if we take the floor of x, it's quite simple because a times n and b are both natural numbers. So, I should say fractional part. So, taking the fractional part, we get 3 over 10. Now, let's see what happens when we take the fractional part of x squared. So, a squared n squared is a natural number. We don't need that. b squared is a natural number. 2abn is also a natural number. So we're left with this 9 over 100. And then this stuff, which may or may not be a natural number. So we'll put it inside the fractional part. So maybe we'll change the order a little bit. This will be 6, 
a n over 10 plus 6 b over 10 plus 9 over 100. So that's where we are. We've got the fractional part of this object. And now let's start maybe playing with the values a and b to make this work. Well, first off, Notice if we can somehow get rid of this guy right here, then we're just left with these guys, which are most definitely fractions, especially if we choose B carefully. And we can get rid of this guy right here if we set A equal to five. So if we set A equal to five, well, we get six times five, which is 30 over 10. So that's a whole number that'll get outside of the fractional part. Then we've got this 6b over 10, but if b is equal to 1, notice we have 6 over 10 plus 3 over 10, that's 9 over 10, and that's exactly what we need. So here, let's set b equal to 1, and that means this fractional part turns into 6 over 10 plus 9 over 100. But then pushing these two things together, which is exactly fractional part x plus fractional part x squared, we'll get our solution, which is 0.99. Okay, so let's just maybe put all of this together. So that means maybe we'll summarize that here, that x will be of the form 5n plus 1 plus 3 over 10. Or maybe if you wanted to put some things together here, that means that x equals 5n plus 13 over 10. And so that's the form of x, which will give us a solution regardless of the natural number n. In other words, this is our infinite family of solutions to this, equa this equation right here. Now you could check these, but checking these will just be going through the same calculation without the free a and b. I'll let you guys do that if you want to. Okay, so let's get rid of this and then we'll show that there are no solutions in this related case. Okay, so in order to solve this second problem, we'll do it by way of contradiction. So let's assume we have a solution. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose that x equals p over q, where the GCD of p and q is equal to one, and we have fractional part x squared plus fractional part x equals one. Okay, but the only way for the sum of these two things to be one is if the sum without the fractional part is a natural number. So let's write that down. So from this, we get that x squared plus x is a natural number. Okay, but now from here, we can put in our version of x that gives us p squared over q squared plus p over q must be a natural number. We can combine these terms by finding a common denominator. That gives us p times p plus q over q squared must be a natural number where I factor that numerator. Now we can make some divisibility arguments. So notice this means that q squared divides p times p plus q, but by the transitivity rule for divisibility, that means that q divides p times p plus q. Okay, but if Q divides P times P plus Q and the GCD of P and Q is one, then that really splits into two cases. Other than either Q is equal to one and thus it divides P or it cannot divide P and it divides P plus Q. So that tells us that Q divides P plus Q. But then q divides itself, so it divides the difference of p plus q and q, meaning it divides p. So here we've got q divides p, but that tells us that the GCD of p with q is equal to q. So that divisibility relationship implies that greatest common divisor relationship. But we assume that GCD to be equal to 1. Okay, so we've got Q is equal to one, which means X is equal to P, which is a natural number. But now that tells us that X squared plus X is equal to, well, on the one hand, it's equal to one, and those are in fractional parts. But on the other hand, that's P squared plus P. 
We can get rid of the fractional parts because these are natural numbers now. But there's no solution to this quadratic equation in the natural numbers. That's really easy to check just by the quadratic formula. And that finishes it all off. So we started with a solution and we showed that that solution was impossible. So that means there is no solution. And that's a good place to stop.